Hi everyone, this is William from the Headphone Experience and I'm here tonight with my first impressions of the Topping E30 DAC. And uh, I will be honest with you, this is only uh, about the second DAC review I've done. In fact, it is the first review I've done of just a plain DAC without a headphone app. I did a review a while back of the Kennerton Atlas which is a combination deck and headphone amp so this is kind of new for me I've done I believe 110 videos over uh, a little over two years now and I review what's sent to me and no one has sent me just um, you know a DAC without an amp up to this point so um, I am going to um, kind of going off in a different direction and I did want to talk about DAX for a minute before I get started and my feelings about it. Um, I am the administrator of the headphone experience which is going on three years old. Uh, as far as I know it's the third largest English speaking headphone group on Facebook and we're up to around 9100 members. Anyway, um, almost every day I see or read a discussion about DACs and there are two different distinct groups as far as DACs are concerned. On one hand you have a group that insists that all DACs sound the same, that there is no difference. It doesn't matter if you spend a hundred dollars, a thousand or ten thousand on a DAC, they're all going to sound the same. And I in a way agree with that because I do believe that um, Delta Sigma DAC chips have reached the point that they're well beyond the threshold of human hearing. So you know a small improvement in one DAC chip over another at this point is beyond human hearing in my opinion and isn't going to really make a difference. But that being said, I do believe there is a difference in DAX. And, you know, it does, you know, the more you spend, you're getting more features and, you know, hopefully better performance. And the reason I believe that is my understanding is there are four different stages in a DAC. And, um, if there's anyone new out there that doesn't know what a DAC is, a DAC is a digital to analog converter. Anyway, I guess I should have pointed that out in the beginning of the video, but uh, my understanding is there's four stages. You have your input stage, which is um, also referred to as a digital interface stage. Then you have your processing stage then I guess <clears throat> then you go to your DAC chip and your actual digital to analog conversion and then you have your analog output stage and just because um, you might have several different DACs that use the same DAC chip I believe they can have a different sound depending on these other stages and the way they're constructed and you know the the build, the materials, everything else. That's why I do believe that there is a difference in DAX from one to another. So, um, you know, I kind of base my review on that. I am not one of these people that thinks that all DAX are the same, even though, like I said, I think Delta Sigma DAC chips have are well beyond the threshold of human hearing. So the DAC chip itself at this point I don't think makes a lot of difference. I think probably the largest difference comes from your analog output stage. But anyway, um, getting back to this DAC, this is the Topping E30 and it, it was loaned to me by Apos Audio and it currently sells for $129.99 that's in US dollars. This is <clears throat> a DAC with a preamp function. It does have a volume control and you can hook this directly up to your amp without a preamp in between. Um, the size of it according to the website is 10 centimeters wide, 12.5 centimeters deep, and 3.2 centimeters high. That translates into about 4 inches wide, about 5 inches deep, and about an inch and a quarter tall. Uh, it's very light. I would say it's easily under a pound. This uh, DAC uses a 
AK4493 DAC chip. It has three digital inputs. Uh, here you can see on the back you've got your coax input, you've got your optical input, and then it also has a USB input. And then it has one set of analog outputs and that can be controlled, uh, the volume of that can be controlled with the internal volume control which um, actually I forgot to get the remote. I'm going to have to stop my video and grab the remote and show that to you. So anyway, um, you can either set it fixed, the volume, um, if you're going to use an amp with a volume control or, or a preamp in it, or you can um, adjust your volume with this and hook it directly to a set of powered speakers or directly <clears throat> to an amp, a non-integrated amp that does not have a volume control. Uh, the specifications on this, according to the website, are the total harmon harmonic distortion is rated at 0 0.0003. The signal to noise ratio is rated at 121 decibels. The crosstalk is rated at 130 decibels, and the dynamic range is um, rated at 119 decibels. Uh, the USB sampling rates are PCM from 44.1 kilohertz all the way up to 768 kilohertz or DSD from 64 to 512. Um, I'm going to stop the video because, like I said, I forgot to get the remote, so I will uh, be back in a second. Okay, I'm back. I did grab the remote, and um, it's pretty nice. It has several functions. You have your power button. You have a mute button. If you're using it as a pre in the preamp function, you can control the volume up and down. Uh, you can adjust your inputs back and forth. Um, what else? Oh, um, it does have, this unit comes with um, an adjustable filter mode where you have six different roll-off filters on this in the digital mode and um, I guess four of those are for PCM and two for DSD I believe. Um, I'll have to look into that before I do my full review on this and make sure. Anyway, it does come with a nice little remote, which is kind of unusual at that price. Um, the um, screen on this is an OLD screen, and um, I did want to, before I got into the sound of this, I wanted to talk for a few minutes about the equipment I used. And this is my first impression. I've only had this a few days, and only have used it maybe a few hours now. So. Um, I'm not going to get too deep into the sound. What I did is right now I'm uh, using the optical output on this or input on it because I'm using this with my headphone system which is in my master bedroom and it is separate from my computer. Before I do my full review I will hook up the USB output on this hook it to my computer but my large amp, my reference amp, the um, the Audio GD Master 9 is in my bedroom set up and I wanted to hook it up to that and I can't do both at the same time so I'll have to bring a smaller amp out here to my computer to hook it up. I did want to mention that this uh, the power supply is 5 volts DC and it does come through your USB cable so your USB will power this unit. If you don't want to do that like what I'm doing right now I don't have this hooked up to a USB cable so the unit does come with an extra cable that is USB at one end and then hooks up to your 5 volt DC input here and I have that plugged into um, a USB charger that is on the front of my uh, monster power supply I can't think of the number on that it is the HTS um, no, that's not the right one. Anyway, I can't think of the number right now, but it does have a power output on it. And 
that is, I'm assuming, I'm assuming is filtered at some level because it's going through the monster power supply. And also in front of the monster power supply, I do have the uh, core power technologies. Um, what's it called? The core power 1800 in front of that, which is pre-filtering the power before it goes into the monster power supply. Anyway, um, so what I'm doing right now is I am running an optical cable to this from my uh, Cambridge Audio 540C CD player, using it as a transport only, obviously, running a digital signal to this, then I'm running the analogs to my Audio GD Master 9. Um, my first sound impressions of this are... it. it sounds outstanding to me for the price. I mean, I'm not really going to try to tell you what it sounds like described. I mean, I don't think there's large differences between one DAC to another, especially in the same price range. But what I'm going to do before I do my full review on this, I will try to compare this directly to the um, digital to analog converter that is built into the Cambridge Audio CD player. I will try to compare this to my um, what is currently my reference DAC, which is the Benchmark Media DAC 1, and um, which is quite a bit more expensive. That was about a $1,000 DAC when it came out and um, was um, A rated by Stereophile Magazine. I know it's a little outdated, but it doesn't have DSD or MQA or any of that, but I think it's still a good DAC. And anyway, so I will try to compare those. And just for kicks, uh, I've got a couple of uh, Sony DVD players that have built-in decks, and I want to compare this, and I'm sure this is going to be better, find out how much of an improvement this makes over just using the built-in decks and the DVD players. But anyway, um, you know, I haven't got a chance to run anything other than CD, you know, level music, which would be your 44.1 kilohertz PCM signal. I'm hoping, um, you know, to mess around with it. It does have DC, DSD input, so I'm hoping to get to try that out. And um, hoping to get a full review out on this in a couple weeks. Um, I did mention that this does have adjustable filters that... Um, roll off the you know the top end at um, you know either a quick roll off or a slow roll off and I believe that's above 20,000 Hertz so to be honest I don't know if I'm gonna be able to hear any difference because I mean there as far as I know there aren't any adults or very few adults that can hear higher than 15,000 Hertz so if the roll off is above 20,000 hertz, I know I can't hear above 15,000 hertz. So if I can hear a difference, I'll tell you if I can't, you know, I'm going to be honest about it. I'm not going to sit here and tell, you know, make up stuff just to make more interesting videos. So anyway, um, I will get back to you in a couple weeks with a full review on this and give you more information, try to compare it to a couple of other decks that I have and um, just talk about a little bit more about the sound and you know how I think it compares so anyway I'm gonna wrap this up once again this is William from the headphone experience if this video has helped you please give me a thumbs up if um, oh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and you are all welcome to join us at the headphone experience on Facebook we are up around 9100 members now so um, hope to see you over there Thanks for watching my video.